All right, I had some people request uh, Oregon in the comment section of the last uh, Can They Make the Playoffs video that I did, which was Penn State. Uh, but up now, the Oregon Ducks. Uh, listen, I've done one of these videos, uh, one of these Can They Make the Playoff videos about Southern Cal, who I have ranked 6th, 7th. Got them ranked 7th. Got Oregon ranked ninth. Um, I, I could make this video about 30 seconds long and just reiterate what I said at the end of the Southern Cal video, which is... I think there's four or five really good teams in the Pac-12. I'm not sure there's a single great team in the Pac-12. And my concern, if I'm a Pac-12 homer or I'm looking for a Pac-12 team, any Pac-12 team to get into the playoffs, is that those four or five teams are all going to beat each other a couple of times over the course of a season. Um, when you look at teams like Southern Cal, Oregon, Washington, uh, Oregon State, Utah, um, UCLA, I think any of those teams can beat any of the, of the other teams on any given day. Um, I don't think they're all equal. Some of those teams, I think, are better than others. Some are better in certain areas than others. But I think all of those teams are good enough on a good day to beat the other four or five. So you may end up with a situation like you had last year in the Pac-12. Oregon, despite the fact that they got their butthole prolapsed in week one against Georgia ended up being a pretty good team. Southern Cal was a pretty good team. Washington was a pretty good team. Oregon State, pretty good team. Utah, UCLA, they were all pretty good teams. But none of them was able to get through the season with one or less loss. Southern Cal, of course, had their opportunity in the Pac-12 title game before losing to Utah. So back to Oregon. Bo Nix coming back is a huge deal. A huge deal. Uh, Bo Nix coming back to Oregon is the difference between Oregon winning 10-plus games and Oregon going 7-5, and five, in my opinion. He's that important uh, to Oregon. He had an unbelievable season last year, was in everybody's Heisman list up until the very end of the year when he when he got hurt and, it, and, and had to miss some time. And even when he played, he just wasn't the same. He couldn't run around, which is really what made Bo Nix so special last season. Um, the problem with Oregon is not that, Bo, is not that Bo Nix is coming back. It's that so is Caleb Williams, uh, so is Cameron Rising, so is Michael Penix. They're all coming back. They all had great years last year, too. Hell, Caleb Williams won the damn Heisman last year. Penix is also on the Heisman list heading into next season. Uh, Cameron Rising at Utah has been there for 45 years. He's got to be the oldest quarterback in college football. Uh, he's like last year's uh, version of Stetson Bennett. With one main difference, of course, Cameron Rising, although he's a good QB, He's not the greatest QB in the history of college football like Stetson Bennett is, uh, but I digress uh, before I regress. Uh, I think Oregon's going to be a really good team. They lose two key defensive players, and I know injuries were an issue, but losing Justin Flo and Noah Sewell, those are two of the probably most talented players you have on the team. You lose one to the draft, you lose one to the transfer portal, but he transferred to Arizona. Wow, wow. Now, Dan Lanning... Uh, you know, is a defensive genius and a guru, and he's a recruiting machine. Um, but this is only his second year at Oregon. He hasn't really had time to stockpile the types of talent that he's looking to get there. Now, all indications are that he's going to get that talent there eventually. And let's be honest, the cupboard wasn't bare when he got there. I mean, Mario Cristobal, for all his shortcomings on game days, is one of the best recruiters in all of college football. There was talent at Oregon when Dan Lanning got there, and we saw that last year. First year ever as a head coach, Dan Lanning had Oregon hovering around the top 10 for the majority of the season. Um, ended up having a pretty good year. So it, I guess to kind of boil it down, do I think it's possible um, for Oregon to make a playoff run in 2023? I think it's possible, although I think it's unlikely. And I would probably put them third or fourth best chances even within the Pac-12. And I know I've got them... I know I've got them as my second highest rated Pac-12 team, but if you go back and watch when I did my top 25 rating video, I tell you on there, I have a real hard time differentiating between Southern Cal, Oregon, Washington, and Utah. A really hard time. I wouldn't be surprised if any of those teams won it. I wouldn't even be surprised if Oregon State ended up winning it. Another team that had a really good season last year. Uh, that's not Oregon State. That's Oregon State right there. Sorry, that's UTSA. The Roadrunners? Um, anyway... Uh, Oregon's going to have a good ground game. Of that, I have no doubt. A healthy Bo Nicks, uh means a lot uh, it, it, with that ground game. And 
he does have the ability to throw the ball. Now, um, I knocked him a lot when he was at Auburn because he didn't play that well when he was at Auburn. But he played really well last year, and people are quick to point out, well, now that he's in the Pac-12 and not in the SEC, well, guess what? He's in the Pac-12 again. So he's probably going to have pretty good numbers again if he can stay, um, if he can stay healthy. My biggest question mark about Oregon is the same question mark, really, I have about the other Pac-12 teams. I know Oregon's good. Are they good enough, or is any Pac-12 team good enough to make it out of the Pac-12 with one or less losses, which is what I think is going to have to happen in order for any of them to make the playoff? Perception is reality a lot of times. And reality is, the Pac-12 hasn't made the playoffs in seven years an 11 and two Pac-12 champion is fighting an uphill battle trying to make it into the college football playoff. They're going to need to find a one loss conference champion, in my opinion, if they want to get in. Now, let's talk a little bit about the schedule. Again, I, I don't like to go into too much detail on schedules in these videos. I sometimes do a, an entire series of videos where I preview teams' schedules, and so maybe we'll do that um, in March. But I do just want to point a few things out about their schedule. Now, I mentioned week one last year when they got absolutely humiliated by Georgia. They don't have that issue this year. They play Portland State um, in week one. Oregon's going to get off to a hot start. I don't care what you think about Oregon. You might think I've got Oregon ranked too high when I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got Oregon ranked at nine. I'm willing to bet anybody $100 that Oregon will be in the top ten in week five of the season. Um, even if you think they shouldn't be in there now, they'll be there by week five. Portland State, that's a win. Now, week two, they play on the road at Texas Tech. They're better than Texas Tech, but they could lose that game. That's by far their most difficult game in the first half of the season, on the road at Texas Tech. Call that 50-50. We'll even call it a loss if you want. But their third game is Hawaii. Their fourth game is Colorado. Their fifth game is Stanford. They could easily be 5-0, Worst case scenario, they're going to be 4-1. And, and I believe a 4-1 and one Oregon will be in the top 10 uh, the second week in October or whenever that is. Then that takes them into their bye week, and then they come out for the second half of the season, and it gets a whole lot harder. Oregon's schedule is completely backloaded. Um, they come off the bye week, and they have what might be their most difficult game of the year on the road at Washington. Now, they play Southern Cal later in the year, but it's a home game. So Southern Cal might be a little bit better than Washington, but because this game's on the road, that's going to be difficult. They come out of the bye week at Washington, come back home, play Washington State. Then they go on the road and play Utah. So they got to play at Washington and at Utah. Two tough places to play against two pretty good teams. Home against Cal, home against Southern Cal late in the season, November 11th, and then on the road. Uh, at Arizona State before closing things up with the Civil War game, they call that, the Oregon State game, which is always a great game. Oregon State, I believe, beat them last year. Um, so you look at the second half of this season at Washington, at Utah, uh, and then home against Southern Cal and Oregon State. I don't know if they can go three and one in those four games. And there's other, and, and then plus you got Cal, Arizona State. You got other games mixed in there too, Washington State. But just look at these four games all in the second half of the season after the bye week at Washington, uh, home against Southern Cal, uh, home against uh, Oregon State, and on the road at Utah. Th those are four tough games. Um, so in order for Oregon to make the playoffs, in my opinion, they're going to have to beat Texas Tech on the road in week two. Because if they stumble there, I don't know that they can make it through the back half of their schedule undefeated, which is what would have to happen for them to finish the regular season with 11-1. and one a chance to win the Pac-12 at 12 and want to get into the playoffs. If they beat Texas Tech, they're going to be 5-0 and heading into the bye week. And if that's the case, I think they do have margin of error. I think they could lose one of those games in the back half of the season, still get into the Pac-12 title game, because you got to remember there's no divisions in the Pac-12. So even if Oregon loses, let's say, uh, to Southern Cal late in the year, and they finish up 11-1, Likely means you're looking at a rematch, Oregon versus Southern Cal in a Pac-12 title game. And we saw how a rematch worked out for Southern Cal last year. It didn't. Southern Cal beat Utah in the regular season, turned around and lost to them in a Pac-12 title game, eliminating themselves from the playoffs. So Oregon's got a shot, but man, at Texas Tech in the, uh, early in the year and then that back half of the schedule, um, I, I don't know that they can make it through there unscathed. We'll see. But I do think Oregon's going to be a, 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 an interesting team to watch. 
I told people this all last year. I'm going to tell you now again, too. Start watching the Pac-12 again. I know a lot of you tuned out from the Pac-12. The Pac-12 was unbelievable football last year. I'm not telling you there was a bunch of great teams in the Pac-12. Again, I think there was a lot of good teams, no great teams. But it was great football week in and week out in the Pac-12 last year. The Pac-12 is leaps and bounds better now than they were three, four, five years ago when everybody just completely tuned out and stopped paying attention. Uh, the Pac-12 was really, really fun to watch. I think Oregon's one of the teams uh, from out there that's got a shot at the playoffs, although I would consider it kind of a long shot. Um, Going to be tough for anybody to get out of the Pac-12 with just the one loss. Have a good morning.